All right. There's been a uh, large request of uh, people who are wanting to, to find out exactly what these large blue cats look like on on sonar. So what I've done here is I've put together some of the uh, clips off the 1197 uh, Hummingbird. And um, what we're going to do here is we're going to spend the next several minutes just looking at uh, these pictures and talk about uh, what uh, large blue cats look like on sonar uh, versus other species of fish. And uh, if you don't know what you're looking at, sometimes it can get confusing. I know, uh, especially a, a few years ago, it got really confusing for me starting out. And uh, over time, I've really found out what these, uh, what these fish look like. All right. Today's sonar makes it easier than ever to be able to locate these, these large catfish. But at the same time, because of all the different options you have on your sonar, it can make it confusing. So... I've actually uh, found something that I that I find makes it easy to fine tune your sonar, and I do recommend it, especially for uh, locating these large blue catfish. And that's this: the next time you're out on the lake, um, go out on the lake. I prefer doing it in a uh, an area where it's calm. Take your crappie rod uh, with like a sixteenth to one eighth ounce jig and uh, drop that jig down in uh, more than twenty foot of water preferably uh, 20 to 30 foot of water with just a 16th 8th ounce jig. Set your system to, uh, to, to restore to its default uh, settings and, uh, and start with your sensitivity level creeping it up uh, point by point by point. And by doing this, what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to locate uh, that crappie jig on your sonar, uh, trying to leave as much white space in your sonar as you can uh, without it cluttering it up with a lot of sensitivity and you want to actually raise that jig up and down and you want to be able to see that jig going from from 26 feet up to 23 feet and back down to 26 feet and up to 23 feet and uh, doing that fine tunes your sonar you know exactly what a an eighth ounce jig looks like on your sonar and you're going to be able to relate that to what a larger catfish will look like and uh, you're going to know exactly. You're going to know exactly uh, what you're seeing on your sonar. Um, and I, I think that is a great way to uh, start fine-tuning uh, your sonar. All right, this right here is an example of having your sonar dialed in with plenty of white space. If you'll notice uh, in the backdrop there, you've got a lot of white space. Over on the left side of the screen, there's a little bit of clutter. Um, I don't like that too much, but uh, for the most part, this is a good example of having your uh, your system dialed in. If you look in the very top right hand corner, see those little those little red speckles? Those are actually gizzard shad uh, in a group there. And uh, what we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how to how to recognize the thread fin and the and the gizzards because there's a there's a really easy way to be able to tell the difference between the two. But this is a good example of uh, sonar that's been dialed in uh, pretty good. Um, and now this is an example of sonar and some of you guys may may relate to this this is an example of what sonar looks like when it's uh, oversensitized um, and there's a reason why I've got this oversensitized but uh, you know we're, we're offshore here we're out in 140 foot of water and those uh, those fish you see if you look at the top uh, top part of the screen uh, between 50 and 70 feet those are just mass herds of large red snapper and uh, but if you look there is no white space in the screen. The reason why uh, there's not is I was trying to uh, to get a really good mark on these on these fish in deep water, um, and it also goes to show that you know at times increasing that sensitivity sensitivity level uh, is helpful. However, looking for these blue cats in in 20 to to 50 to 60 to 70 foot of water, you're not going to want to uh, to oversensitize your screen. Uh, and here's a little clip of uh, some of these red snapper uh, that uh, that were in this uh, this hey, herd right here. I thought I had the a drag game, set. but the bro line did. Yeah. What, hey, what what just happened? Oh, I broke fun. off my line. This fish. You broke, broke your line? No, broke the rod. You Power Pro line works. <laughs> Hundred pound tench. You can pull them out of the, you can pull them out of the ocean. Six feet deep. <laughs> oh well, look at look at Reggie over here. Reggie's on. Oh, man. Oh, Reggie, you still on? Yeah, yeah, I'm on. Oh. I gotta get some taste of this guys. Okay, in this section, we're going to talk uh, just real briefly about the difference between what catfish look like and sand bass. 
And the reason why I'm, why I'm putting this in the video is because um, from probably October through at least December, uh, even sometimes into January, when the fish haven't gone extremely deep, uh, you're going to be fishing in areas where there's a lot of sand bass, uh, typically. The shad uh, or in an area that the fish are feeding. And you need to be able to distinguish between sand bass and catfish. And they're, and they're actually very easy to distinguish. If you've got a side scan, that's all the more helpful, especially in determining the difference. But even on uh, 2D sonar, which I'm trying to focus this video more on, on 2D sonar, um, you're going to see a difference. Sand bass typically are cloudy on the bottom. And here is a really good picture. Uh, this was taken on Cedar Creek Lake. Um, and these are sand bass. And there are a whole bunch of them. We sat and caught 75 of these sand bass in a probably probably an hour. And uh, when you're getting into schools of sand bass, this is what they look like. Notice the clouds on the bottom. No distinct arches whatsoever. Uh, those clouds probably have seven or eight fish in them. Uh, a lot of times when you get crappie, um, uh, crappie c come up on 2D sonar more like clouds. It's hard to tell crappie because they're in they're in brush, but uh, but this is what uh, this is what sand bass look like right here. Um, and uh, now this is a great example right here uh, of what a mature catfish uh, looks like. And the reason why I know this is a catfish is because we set <clears throat> and we caught several of these right here. Uh, these catfish right here uh, are medium, medium size, probably uh, 20 to 35, 40 pounds. And uh, notice the arch. Uh, now in the hummingbird, uh, my settings, um, red is my my uh, deepest echo or my hardest echo. Uh, in the Lowrance, I believe the yellow is uh, is going to be your 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 hardest return. And uh, on a Lowrance, a catfish, uh, if you've got it set to uh, the original color palette. The catfish is the larger catfish because of that bone in his head, um, and, uh, and his density is going to come back with an extremely hard return. That's why it's 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 so yellow in its arch. Or on the hummingbird with its original color palette, it's it's, uh, it's red. Uh, notice uh, notice the catfish in this picture. Uh, you can even tell which way he's uh, which way he's sitting. Uh, notice the red towards the front, uh, and the red goes away towards the back. That's towards his tail. Um, a lot of this is trial and error. Um, you know, gar tend to look like a catfish uh, on sonar, and uh, but most of the time uh, you can tell. Uh, and the best way to do it is to to get your bait down there and, and to fish for them. So this is a great example uh, of what catfish and sand bass look like on the 2D sonar. Now that we've got a uh, really good idea of what a uh, mature catfish looks like on 2D sonar, let's go ahead and head out on the water and um, take a look at a little bit of uh, live video uh, that I took uh, not too long ago uh, while on the water. Uh, this gets a little monotonous, but uh, bear with me here as we go through and start looking um, at, this, at this video. Okay, here we are in pretty deep water, and uh, this wasn't too long ago. And uh, you can see I have uh, dropped down into a river channel, and... Uh, here we are switching uh, from uh, 2D sonar to side scan view. You can see in the water column, the dark area, large, large uh, groups of uh, threadfin shad. And um, you can see the river um, there. And I'm switching, I'm panning now to my GPS mode. I've actually come out of the river channel and it matches up here. The uh, the boat and the arrow I'm going, I'm actually headed up into shallower water right there. Look at the, uh, the gizzard, or the, rather the threadfin shad pockets of, um, of shad up uh, around uh, 20 to 25 foot of water. I'm looking for fish right now and uh, I'm scanning remember uh, what those uh, what those catfish look like. Um, really not much uh, really not much on the sonar right now and uh, I'm gonna be turning around here in just a minute and headed back towards the river channel. Um, there's a shot of uh, side scan, flip back to a full view of uh, 2D sonar. And I'm driving along here and I'm still really not seeing uh, much on the sonar. As I turn around, I'm now headed, <clears throat> excuse me, now I'm headed um, back uh, towards the river channel. You can see the waypoint there, 1179. That's actually uh, an area in the river channel where I had marked some fish. 
and I've turned around and I'm actually headed back towards them. Um, large groups of uh, of threadfin shad, and look at there, there are uh, the beginning of some fish. Um, I've switched over as you can see now. Uh, I've got uh, one, two, I've got three good sized fish, and here at the edge of the river channel, um, there are quite a few uh, large uh, catfish um, sitting, and it looks to me like almost every one of them are facing uh, the exact same way. Uh, looks like uh, their heads are on the left, and their tails are uh, are on the right for the most part, if you can see that. Um, and I actually can see these. If you look right here, I switched over to, uh, to side scan view. I'm moving my cursor over. And I'm going to zoom in on those fish, and there you go. And there's uh, there's three uh, nice size uh, catfish right there. You can see their shadows. And um, so I would, uh, if I were fishing for these fish, and actually we did fish for these fish, we caught one of them. Um, you're going to anchor up on these fish, and you're going to fan cast around them, um, and, and that's how you're going to set up on them. Okay, uh, as I move forward, there's something I want to show you guys. Let's uh, let's pause the video right here and take a look at something here. Take a look at the uh, at the shag concentration. Uh, this is really important. Um, you, there are times you will find fish like this. Um, you'll find fish that mark large fish like this, but they're in the midst of very large groups of shad. And that tends uh, that tends to make me believe, uh, and after fishing for them, uh, till I'm blue in the face, and them not biting, that uh, when you find large fish, and there are lots of shad around them, those fish are not feeding. The shad have absolutely no fear whatsoever. Now looky here, you've got over to the left, we've got large groups of uh, of balled up uh, threadfin shad above the large catfish here. That it, there is absolutely very small groups of balled up shad and that's something you want to look for these fish right here in my opinion are feeding uh, and that's why uh, the shad are, are not near them and the and the groups that are there are balled up really really tight and they're small groups and that that's a really telltale sign of uh, of feeding catfish